Viewers and subscribers, what a guan, a blessed and wonderful Monday morning to each and every person out there tuning into on the spot news media. Now, my peeps, you don't know how we do it over on this side each and every morning. We have to give thanks and praise to the Most High Creator for the preservation of life because life is indeed the greatest. So, in the morning, my peeps, I have a few stories for share with you, the regular members of Chan Public and also members of the diaspora. So, please like the video, share the video, watch the entire vlog so we can get a full understanding and a better appreciation of everything we are going in Jamaica. So, watch this now, my peeps. We are going to kick it off with some international news. Then, of course, we take it on back to local style. Now what this man presently on your screen identified as Mickey was taken out in a hail of bullets by criminal elements at a party in Orlando, Florida over the weekend. On the spot news media is not for certain about the facts surrounding his knockings and clappings but of course we will most definitely get that information and update you in a subsequent newscast. And still in the international news segment, our Caribbean nation, Cayman Islands, has released this photo of a Jamaican man identified as Everton Ellis, but more popularly known in the streets as Pinchers. A popular Cayman news outlet known as Cayman Mall Road stated that Pinchers is presently in his early 50s and is presently on the run for a hold on and take type of situation. It is said that he molested a child under the age of 13 in the Grand Cayman Islands. The Cayman police is said to be on hot pursuit in search of Everton Ellis aka Pinchers. So anyone having any information as to the whereabouts of Everton Ellis, please alert the Cayman police. And God forbid he makes it out of the Cayman Islands. Please alert the police wherever you see this face so he can be taken back to the Cayman Islands to answer to the charges that will be preferred against him. Yeah, man. So anyway, make we continue back to local style. Now on your screen is a 15-year-old student that has gone missing since last week, Wednesday. That's on the 20th. She has since been identified as 15 years old, Melissa Coates. It is said that she's from the Hampton area in Montego Bay, St. James. She was last seen in a black pants, blue blouse and a black Air Force One sneakers. If seen, please call this number 876-742-4184 or the nearest police station. Now my peeps into the knockings and clappings. Now uh, that small vice clip that you heard just before the on the spot news media intro of residents in the terminal road area of the Olaba Bay community in the St. Catherine South Police Division. 
that was the scene of a knockings and clappings that took place between criminal elements and the police, which left two criminal elements no longer among the land of the living and two firearms no off the streets and in the possession of the police. But residents are refuting the claims of the police as always, stating that the two men that was taken out by the police are indeed innocent. Now I'll be giving you the official police report as it relates to that particular knockings and clappings and then of course on the spot news media will get into the meat of the matter. Now the official police report state that sometime around 1.30 p.m. on Saturday, March 23, 2024, the police were on patrol in the Old Arbor Bay community. They were on patrol in marked service units. It is said that the police saw two men in a motor vehicle and upon seeing the men, the police stated that the men seeing them pulled firearms and started to fire in their direction in a bit to escape the long arm of the law. Now, Officer Yeman Pick and team, being the well-trained officers and most definitely have superior training, was very quick on the draw and tackled the criminal elements in a firefight. It is said that both criminals received carnop wounds all over their bodies and was quickly whisked away to the hospital in a bid to save their lives. But unfortunately so, they lost their lives upon reaching the hospital. The police report stated that one Beretta 9mm pistol with three live rounds and a homemade shotgun with three cartridges was recovered from that scene. Now, residents contacted on the spot news media and stated that the two men were indeed innocent men who had a bright future ahead of them poor oh, may i tell my peeps the thing rough but before we get into the meat of the matter my peeps we just want to make the regular ones and ones them understand the whole dynamics of some of us as jamaicans we have all seen in recent times in the flower hill community of saint james where a seven year old and a nine year old was brutally cut down by bullets in a car no protest. We have seen where in recent times in the central village community of the St. Catherine South Police Division, women and children slaughtered and burnt in a home in the central village community in Compound. No protest. We have seen in the Kingston Western Police Division a 16-year-old was Brutally cut down in a hail of bullets by criminal elements. No protests. And we have seen many other similar circumstances happening to the regular members of Chan Public. I'm speaking about innocent persons and no protests. But as soon as the police slap with all dirty kind of boy, everyone is out in all their glory protesting. Poor oh, me, I tell my peeps. The thing rough. So the two criminal elements that was taken out by the police is presently on your screen. Nigeria, Bailey and the other criminal element identified as Daniel Mackenzie. Now we're going to focus on the criminal element identified as Daniel Mackenzie. Because Nigeria Bailey is said to be a little fallabacker and end up get clapwe in the fiery confrontation with the police. Now, as it relates to Daniel Mackenzie, he's popularly known in the criminal underworld as Bottle. He is a known Nakis and Clapis, a known criminal element, most definitely a police person of interest that has been on the police radar for quite some time and he has also been the subject of many 
police operations. Now, this criminal element here that residents are protesting for and saying that he is an innocent citizen of the community that had a bright future ahead of him is a known Nakis and Klapis. Now, why I state that? He was implicated in the September 2023 knockings and clappings of a fisherman identified as Paul Ranalson, which took place along the fishing beach in the Olaba fishing village. So the criminal element Daniel McKenzie was arrested for that particular knockings and clappings that claimed the life of Paul Ranalson. Now the alleged eyewitness failed to show up at the identification parade. Hence the reason for that investigation to basically fall apart. The eyewitness was threatened by criminal elements aligned to Daniel McKenzie, a.k.a. Bottle. So this brother is definitely no saint whatsoever. Daniel McKenzie was also implicated in another knockings and clappings where the victim himself withdrew his statement in fear of his life. So this criminal element here has been raking havoc in the terminal community of Olaba Bay for quite some time. Now, why you think residents went out in their numbers to protest the knockings and clappings of this criminal element here? He is seen as their modern day hero, their defender against other rival Nakis and Clappies. Now we are going to talk about the rivals in a short while. But we definitely have to make you, the regular members of Chan Public, understand the dynamics of our present day society. So the citizens of that particular era where Daniel McKenzie, aka Bottle, is from came out in their numbers because they have lost their defender against other criminal elements who are hellbent in seizing and basically taking control of the terminal community in the Old Arbor Bay area. So the criminal elements who are, or should I say, was his rivals, are these two old Dutty Kana Boya presently on your screen. They have since been identified as Sheldon Brown, but more popularly known in the criminal underworld as 12. And this criminal element here identified as Gregory Henry, but more popularly known in the criminal underworld as Baba Roots. Both are indeed wanted by the St. Catherine South Police for a series of crimes long so to include illegal possession of firearm and ammunition and also a series of knockings and clappings with the intention to take some people life. They are now out of the area and presently on the run from the police. They are basically community and parish hopping. So they have been spotted in sections of St. Catherine. They have been spotted in sections of Clarendon and also as far back as in the parish of Manchester. So anyone seeing these criminal elements, please alert the police immediately. They are always considered armed and dangerous. Now, these two criminal elements in my peeps are some real knackies and clappies. So who remember the fatal knackings and clappings that took place in February of this year of the man identified as Japanese? Well, for those from the Old Arbor community and remember that fatal knackings and clappings are them to all dirty kind of boy, do the dirt. They are also being sought by the police for a recent knockings and clappings that almost took the life of some people. So they are presently on the run. So for those who love harbor criminal elements in our yard and also in your immediate surrounding, be warned. Officer Yeman Pick and Team was sent specifically to capture these criminal elements by whatsoever means necessary. So if you are caught in the company 
of these criminal elements, you too will be a subject to be charged. And if they should take on the officers in a fiery confrontation, who knows, you too may fall victim. So be warned, anyone knowing the whereabouts of these two criminal elements, please alert the police with immediate effect. These two criminal elements, as I stated earlier, are to be considered armed and dangerous. So again, my peeps, Sheldon Brown, a.k.a. 12, and Gregory Henry, a.k.a. Baba Roots. The one-time enemies of the now-deceased criminal element, Daniel McKenzie, is indeed wanted. Yeah, man. And as always, my peeps, if you don't trust the police, link on the Spot News Media or any like-minded vlogger. Give us the information and we will most definitely pass it on to the relevant authorities who can make effective change. Now over there in the neighboring parish of Clarendon, this man presently on your screen identified as 49-year-old Michael Basia was taken out in a hail of bullets by armed criminal elements at his brother's wake in Tollgate, Clarendon, Thursday. Now this family has seen a similar thing happen to another brother a little over a year ago. So during his knockings and clappings, two other persons was conduct in that attack. Michael is the brother of the Manchester businessman, 67-year-old Jerome Basia, who was taken out in a hail of bullets by criminal elements just over a year ago. Jerome was taken out on the morning of March 14th, 2023 whilst working on an apartment complex he was developing in Tollgate, Clarendon. Now on the spot news media understands that Michael recently came to Jamaica from the United Kingdom to attend a funeral of another brother whose sources stated that had collapsed and lost his life. So at the wake for the brother on Thursday, it is reported to on the spot news media that sometime around minutes to 9 p.m. Michael Basia was among several persons at a wake for his brother who lost his life as I stated earlier in the UK when they were pounced upon by armed criminal elements who opened gunfire at them. It is said that Basia received several can of wounds all over the upper body and head. He was rushed to the hospital in a bit to save his life but he was pronounced you know what upon arrival. Two other persons were hospitalized for treatment. Now, head of the Clarendon Police, Carlos Russell, says no motive has been established for that particular knockings and clappings. As for me, I think that it has everything to do with the fatal knockings and clappings of his brother just over a year ago in the same Tollgate community at his apartment complex. So Superintendent Russell is imploring anyone with information that could assist this and other investigations to contact the police. Just last Sunday, a 65-year-old man was taken out in a suspected arson attack also in the Tollgate area. And as of March 16, a total of 12 was taken out in a hail of bullets by criminal elements in the Clarendon Police Division. Yeah, man. Now, in other news, briefly, but to be updated in a subsequent newscast, four persons was conned up and seriously wounded off Walton Park Road in the troubled, war-torn, crime-riddled St. Andrew South Police Division late Sunday afternoon. On the spot, news media was reliably informed that the knockings and clappings occurred along 85 lane off Walton Park Road sometime after 5 p.m. A teenage boy was said to be among those wounded. The police stated that more than 15 spent casings was found along the roadway. The police reported that the occupants of a silver-looking motor car opened gunfire in the lane where the crowd was gathered. A group of young men were in the area playing football when the knockings and clappings took place. The body of a man was also seen in a blue barrel 
slaughtered, no longer among the land of the living, in the Marchpen Road, a community of the troubled, war-torn, crime-riddled St. Catherine North Police Division, and also the lifeless body of a man identified as Teddy was discovered on the street, laying face down in a pool of red substance leaking from his body in the Cambridge community of St. James. Poor me, I tell my peeps, the knockings and clappings continues. So anyways, remember to like, share, subscribe to the channel. Stay tuned to On The Spot News Media as I continue to bring you fresh news and updates in a subsequent newscast. On The Spot News Media. Yeah, man.